conversation today about the music ministry. Please, in this video, I'll be discussing about the person of Pastor Chris or Yakilome, the person of Frank Edwards, and looking at also continuing from our conversation before about the music ministry, looking at um, Minister GUC and his record label boss. As I get to break down something I have started already in a three part series, we established that in the body of Christ, there are music ministers, just like we have other acts of service that are aimed towards building up the body of Christ. The video is a little bit lengthy, so you can watch as little as you want, or maybe watch, save the video, come back and watch again, because I'm going to show you how Pastor Chris was indeed right with his own um, judgment as to what he believes should be happening in the body of Christ, looking specifically at the music ministry which we had discussed up till now. So first of all, let me bring the good news because people see me as the one who brings the bad news. But I have to show you the ills of what is happening in the body of Christ so we get to know and become aware of them. The good news is that Minister GUC, I don't know if you know him, but he's also signed to Easy Concept. Remember our very first video of looking at the music ministry specifically was when we talked about a person of Macy Chimo, who was part of Easy Concept record label but left recently with a little bit of a drama as well we looked at that specifically in one video so congratulations to minister guc he has a very wonderful mansion to his name and you might be wondering we looked at the concept of ministry and industry and looking at the main industry so let me read what he got to say about guc which i think it's quite interesting looking at this whole synergy between people being gospel ministers, profiting from their skill or what I say their gift, as well as being in ministry doing that, which is totally against something we had discussed before looking at the person of Pastor Chris. So on an Instagram post, he said here, On the 4th of November 2019, the journey officially started for Minister GUC. It has been three years and eight months and it has been a very great journey. When I was convinced to sign him, a few folks came to me and made remarks on how he is a preacher and not a singer. How he isn't commercially valuable to such, for such investment. How he wasn't such a commercial songwriter and more. Note, commercial. Look at him talking about an investment he's going to make to... Uh -huh. You understand because how you got to know minister guc today is because there were people that backed up the attention he has today which you know and if you think his songs or would i say the songs he has been ministering are not a blessing to the body of christ please tell me in the comment section even though you don't know that also there's an investment that got to bring out amplify that particular voice you got to know of today courtesy of his Level boss, but let's continue. However, I was very focused on my convictions about Minister GUC, and today I can say it was one of my very best decisions as a music executive. His commitment, loyalty, consistent honor, and selfless understanding are sincerely rare. Look at how he put those in bold. Minister JUC will literally pause on his recording project just to have another label mate find expression or be attended to. Humility. He would call and stay on the phone for hours trying to find out how other artists are doing and how he can be of any support or of value to the organization. Organization written in capital letters. It's for a reason. Pay attention to details. He waited patiently and without pressure for one year and two months after our last album release before our latest single Ikechi was recorded and released. I am not here to speak about him as an angel, but he is very intentional about giving so much value and not being regrettable investment investment in capital letter because people don't really get to understand this same way we are determined to giving him our best support in his career and main industry cruise main industry is a synergy between ministry where you are serving the body or whichever parasitical you are serving minister for this minister for this now we are hearing that Inwike has been nominated as minister 
by Jagaban and the PDP are saying that this might be Mwike's officially getting out of the PDP. What do you think about that? When he was relocated to Lakers from PH in 2020, he had technical and inevitable contingencies sorting his accommodation for about six good months. He lived in our office space with huge understanding and patience until it was sorted. He lived in the office. Now when you see the all glamour and all of that, everyone has been to some kind of trenches experience. One day I will talk about my story on the platform for those of you who love me. Let me not focus on haters too much because what you do here is a luta continua. With joy and gladness in my heart, I alongside his pastor, I alongside his pastor, and family were privileged to join in the dedication and unveiling of his beautifully put together exquisite mansion. It brought me overwhelming joy and fulfillment. Kingmakers are majorly satisfied by the exploits of those they have been privileged by God to raise. Kingmakers. How did you get to know about Mrs. Chingo today, even though she left the, the label and all that? People can live, just like we talked about recently about churches, where people get to live, pastors can leave the churches they were before and start up another ministry and all that. It happens. The same thing also in the music ministry. But I think everyone is cool right now. I'm very, very happy for hearing this about Minister JUC. So from him, just from 2020, him moving to Lagos, working with the music executives that invest in him. People think that, if you think that music ministers themselves um, if, if, if with this whole drama I see happening against music ministers and then speaking about them, we'll look at that much later in this series because it's, a, it's, it's quite a series. I'll put them in a playlist so you can get to follow them much later. You have to understand that if Pastor Chris himself could be running a record label, Love World Records, having music ministers, think about the investment he got to put in them. That's why it could be painful that people you have invested in and all that one day decide to leave the ministry or would I say leave the record level, if I'm to put it that way. And I understand Pastor Chris's sentiments and I understand what happened with the whole cine drama, Frank Edwards, Eben, name them, most of them that left like Moses Bliss, come on. Anytime you think of those people, you always have to remember their reference points, whether you like it or not, Pastor Chris. And we must give him his flowers because if not for his ministry that get to, you know, bring these people out, you wouldn't probably get to know about them, I would say, probably. Because like I always tell you something, relevant by association, whether you like it or not, that's why I don't hate. The day I nurse any iota, symptom of hatred against or against your man of God or the God you have been compelled to worship. Let me tell you, there are two ways to respect a man. One, as a result of his track record of quality leadership, or number two, because he has created a system that compels you to worship him. Created a system that compels you, not like willingly, but compels you. To worship him as your man of god that day god knows the the god knows our dealings with that when it comes to my heart and my conscience when i do what i do right here because the reason why you know me most of you know my person is because of the conversations i bring the gimmicks i expose and a lot of things i get to bring out of what is happening in the body of christ good or bad just that you get to see more of the bad Understanding this particular premise right now, one thing we talked about in our last video looking at the music ministry is the subject of music ministers having to be under some form of authority or would I say under a church with a pastor that gets to, to a great extent, act at a, would I say, spiritual head if I'm to put it that way, if I am to put it that way, or someone that watches over them. Because if you look at the scriptures, music ministers, always worked or operated under the authority or direction of a superior authority comments now will be coming up watch my part three to understand the scriptural angle of the music ministry we discuss it with scriptures from old testament to new testament okay looking at the music ministry 
but there's always that consistently that operation as well that comes with how they get to function like we see in scripture so i talked about the essence for music ministers to have a pastor or a local church where they are domiciled not as if they sit down in their house like you see secular and then wherever they are being called for show, they go and perform anyway like it's a gig. We talked about the gigging and all of that that happens in the church. Just like Michael Oropo in this video, if you have not watched it, even talked about how pastors most times like, they get to operate like as if it's gigs, comparing music ministers and apostles themselves. But if you have not watched this video, you will not understand what I'm saying. So still in this conversation here, Still in this conversation, Frank Edwards goes to validate what we talked about in our part three of this video. And this is what Frank Edwards got to say at Dr. Paul Neche's church. And I have some really, really lessons to teach you with this thing. Listen to um, Frank Edwards right now. By the grace of God, I've been doing ministry, music ministry for, for some years now. And... Um, you know, they invite you everywhere and you just, you know, with free heart, you happily go there, you know, to minister to, to the people of God. Sometimes, out of excitement, you don't even cross-check where you're going to. The altar that is in charge there, what is in control, what is, you just, out of excitement, we just go everywhere. So... I remember that I was working on an album project. You know, I don't, I don't write songs. I receive them. So I don't have a songbook, you know. I mean, my team will tell you, I don't have any songbook anywhere with anything written. I've never written one song in my life. So, but I know that I was getting ready for this album project and the Lord has given me a lot of songs and I went somewhere to minister I won't mention the name of the place I could tell that my my head emptied head emptied when I mean my head I mean I'm I'm a well-trained sound engineer I'm a producer I do my songs myself so it's not like I didn't know what I was doing but after I came back from that place I could not do anything I'll get into the studio. It feels like there's a blockage. And I didn't know what was going on. Time was going, you know, people were asking me, what is going on? We've not heard from you. You know, people say, what's going on? We've not heard from you. I just keep saying, I'm working, I'm working. But I could tell that there was a blockage somewhere. And fast forward, you know, the man of God sent for me not for an event, just for us to have a conversation. And you know, he engaged me, he said, what's going on? I had to open up to him, I said, Pastor, look at this, you know, look at that, look at where I've been to. And then he said, now I see what the problem is. It is not everywhere that you go to. It is not everywhere. You have to know, you have to be prayerful about places you go to. He said, I'm not saying to you, don't go anywhere. I'm not saying don't, don't go there, but at least pray. And then he said that just very short prayer over the phone, sir, the very next day. It felt as if they opened an entire window of heaven. <laughs> and, you know, song begin to pour like, There will be a heavy downpour of God's blessings today. A heavy downpour of God's favor today. There will be a heavy downpour of God's favor today. A heavy downpour of God's favor today. So, so, and 
and and since then there has been an overflow since then there has been an overflow not just in songs every area of my life every area of my life and you know pastor i want to publicly say a very big thank you i want to appreciate you for for being a father as busy as busy as hectic as the man of god's event is he says to me frank please anytime you need anything i don't know if you're hearing me he didn't say anytime you need advice he said whatever you need tell me if i don't do it just know it's beyond my capacity now having listened to him this has this is something you have to understand I have taught you these principles many times for those who have followed me over the years. The relevance of a music minister in the Christendom hovers around the Christian community where they are also gatekeepers. Gatekeepers in the sense that how they become relevant or they get the opportunity to show their gifts or would I say fine expression depends on people who get to run churches like pastors who give them the pulpit or the acceptance in the body of Christ. And most times, ministers, music ministers find the acceptance in the body of Christ when they are being fronted or would I say promoted or commended by pastors, those who actually get to run churches where they have the platform. There are many, since I've started talking about music ministry, many people have reached out to me who have made gospel songs on their own maybe in a church that is not too popular and they have met me and said hey george can i give you my song for you to promote for me on your platform me because i've seen that okay george talks about things that happen in church a lot more so maybe when george gets to give a voice to this or would i say an endorsement to this then it's gonna gain traction i understand this as well but you see when if you look, for example, like Frank Edwards, when he was with Christ Embassy, how did you get to know about him? Pastor Chris invested in them, probably got to make profit from those investments because whether you like it or not, if you're running a record label, there's always a mindset to do it as well. It's commercial, it's business, it's investment, there has to be returns, records were sold, and all that. That is a fact. But you see, understanding this right here as well, you get to see that there's a business side as well that comes with this. Even though you are fulfilling ministry, serving the body of Christ, but you are in an industry, once you already even start having record labels, you are in the industry. I don't know if you understand. So Frank Edwards now validating what Pastor Chris himself was really much against because it got to a point whereby they themselves would not be probably available on Sunday services because if you have that much of great singers, in your ministry all over the globe your church services should be more of like amazing because they would be ministering in the church that gave them the voice the platform the relevance by the help of god and the yes of course and it's always supposed to be amazing but note these music ministers pastor chris said it himself they were strategies that were created in order to win more to the kingdom or would i say probably attract more people to the church maybe not christ embassy but to the church as a whole but i'm going to look at it as christ embassy as a church you understand that was the main focus so let's say you get to know frank edwards and other music ministers from christ embassy and you get to follow them that means you're going to follow them to their church because you want to see more of them and also enjoy more of that ministry. And by virtue of these people leaving the ministry where they were part of or where they got to be known by, that can also create some kind of division amongst the minds of people who love them and love their ministry and maybe see this rift as a situation of, ah, should I stand with uh, Frank Edwards or should I stand with uh, Pastor Chris, my papa, or this and that. Those who were not really that rooted in 
Pastor Chris or would I say Christ Embassy may be like, okay, it's okay, what happened? It's okay, it's still the body of Christ. Some might be angry at them that people today, I read the comments, who hate or who get so angry that Frank Edwards and the rest of them, you know, you know, left and all that. Some are okay because they're still using their gifts in the body of Christ still on the same line of you know a little bit of profitability here of course they would get to charge where they go to minister to a great extent if i'm not mistaken on that but here is the point i'm trying to make you understand here frank edwards himself speaking the way he spoke about the person of dr paul Anetje publicly and more of like calling him father maybe other pastors he went to go and preach in their places also would be potential fathers you get to understand what i was trying to say before now he gets to know that there are some altars and i've told you people many times it's not everybody that called himself man of god that is man of god some of them are serving altars that you cannot imagine no matter how they paint themselves okay don't listen to me this is an old video of audio of joshua sermon here many ministers and many ministries realize that because they are not walking by the principles of God, they require grace and power to move forward and attract, in quotes, the crowd is not there. So what happens? They begin to visit all kinds of witch doctors. Can I tell you, let me tell you the truth. I tell you as a servant of the living God, yes, sir. there are more men of God than you can imagine that visit witch doctors every week in this country, including those you see on TV, including some of them that you sit under the administration. Did you hear that? Seeing it himself, just that some of you were hating me because Joshua Sermon has said, no more, he's not going to be talking about other churches or this and that or calling out any. This is what Joshua Sermon said. So let me ask you, what kind of church, where do you think, do you think that is any, any, any how church? I'm not going to say any how in a demeaning manner, but do you think that any church can just wake up and call Frank Edwards to come and sing in their church? No, not just. It has to be maybe a, a top tier kind of church. You understand? Church that can be able to pay, considering the attention that Frank Edwards holds. Except Frank Edwards, he doesn't charge for him to minister anywhere. Then any church can call him to come and minister in their church. But notice one thing here. There has to be that discernment, that leading of God when it comes to where you go to go and minister. I don't want to mention names, but on this platform, if you have watched videos of people I have exposed, their gimmicks, and all that, those who, even those who are selling uh, spiritual mouth odor oil and all that, I don't want to, some of you that have been watching me for over time, you know. So if he could be in a situation whereby he goes to anywhere, he said it himself, only for him to see that he's experiencing some things that are not, uh, is not normal, think to yourself. When I sit down here and I'm showing you these abnormal things happening, I become the one that is your evil one. But you are still watching me anyways. Except for the fact where he says that he doesn't write songs. If God is giving you songs, like you would say, because it has to be presented in a particular way, you will arise to what you are hearing from heaven down. But you see that, that essence, and this is also warning to all of you other ministers as well. You need to have a pastor that... I won't say like, you know, you need to have a pastor that, you need to have your own pastor or have a local church. You understand? It's okay because this right here, it's your career. GUC, that is his career. That is his life. He's under a label. So while he's also being godly and making his, his gifts, making way for him as well, there's a profitability side to it as well. But to him, as God is gifting, as God as He is getting songs and ministry, also humble to where that goes to invest in Him, invest in Him, and bring Him out to the world for Him, for youth people to know Him. To a great extent, He's reaping the fruits. He has a house to His name, and His being is serving nicely. Frank Edwards owns his record label. He does everything himself and all that. So no who, who, who controls him? Nobody. So he can go anywhere he wants to go and minister 
so far as of course probably they are paying they have to be paying but him coming to this realization is what pastor chris himself was talking about how they are in different places they don't even come to church they go here go here go here i'm hearing the echo of what pastor chris was talking about so even though pastor chris was not happy with the way the way it got to a point where pastor chris said that come on music ministry in fact if you are turning uh, 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 uh the gift of god into a career then <laughs> it is wrong you should not make it a career or something i i, I just sometimes i now ask myself a, a question like being a pastor or something is it a what is it what is really really a career in this in in, in this context so out of that you know, I would, would I say bitterness or holy anger? <laughs> holy anger. Pastor Chris got to say a, lot, a couple of things, from even to the addressing and most of them. And Moses Bliss was also there in the audience because Moses Bliss himself, he goes to comedy shows to go and sing and all that. But of course, we are supposed to be the light of the world and salt of the earth, if you look at it on the opposite side as well. But you have to be very careful where you also go to go and minister because. The altar, sometimes you go to go and minister, you become an endorsement for them. That those who, who know your track record or where you are coming from and pulpit you have shared, seeing you singing on this particular pulpit of maybe the person is a false prophet or someone diabolic who is also, quote unquote, in the body of Christ. Come on, Jesus was not crazy to say, beware of false prophets. How many times do you hear in there, do you read in the scriptures, beware, beware, beware? How, do you, how can you beware? If you are not attentive to elements of falsehood but as a music minister they could go anywhere he could go anywhere to go and minister but right now I think he's now beginning to come to an understanding is he saying this was he saying what he was saying to dr. Paul and Eche to more of like promote his songs or you know because recently he was the one that came out and said that he's richer than any Yahoo boy because his wealth comes with peace of mind that Yahoo boys do not have. I don't know some of you if you have seen the video, but maybe you'll look at that in a different discussion. The essence of this video and this conversation right now is for you to understand one point.